Hello, Working to Beat Hell fans. You might have noticed today that I've got my winter coat on. It's not because I'm reviewing Disney's animated film Frozen, but because my office is rather cold at the moment. Anyway, as I said, I am going to be reviewing Frozen, and so I want to give the spoiler alert warning, so to speak, so that, you know, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm going to spoil it for you. So stop the video here, go watch the movie, then come back and see the rest of this video. That being said, if you're continuing to watch, I assume you've either seen the movie or you simply don't care about the spoilers that I'm going to throw out there. I think this is one of Disney's best movies in years, probably decades, probably going back to the late 80s, early 90s. It's got a wonderful soundtrack to it, and it's got a wonderful story to tell as well. The, the refreshing thing about this movie is that the story is not that worn-out story that we so often get from Disney or similar type movies where a princess falls under a spell and Prince Charming has to come and save her, and then they ride off into the distance living happily ever after. That's not what Frozen is about. And I think it's refreshing because it's not a realistic portrayal of love. You know, I often hear a lot of parents complain that they think that some of those movies may teach young girls uh, the wrong thing about relationships, having them wait for a Prince Charming to come save them. Now, I don't want to get into a commentary on that. I think that's an open topic for debate. But I think that if that is one of your hang-ups with a lot of Disney movies, Frozen's going to be a refreshing uh gift to you because it makes fun of that notion. In fact, there's a scene where one of the characters is picking on one of the princesses because she tried to get engaged after one day. And he says, how can you get engaged after one day? And I think it's a valid criticism, certainly. You know, true love and this romantic opinion of love that we have where you meet that one and you have that true love moment and you ride off into the distance is not an accurate portrayal of love. <laughs> In fact, when we turn to our scriptures and to our faith, what we learn is that love is not romance at all. What love is, is it's willing the good of the other. It's willing the good of another person. It's not about finding something for myself. And I think that this is seen wonderfully in Frozen. We see it first in the character of Elsa. At the beginning of the movie, recall that Elsa accidentally hit Anna with her freezing power, and Anna had to be rushed off to these trolls who saved her. But then Elsa had to sacrifice her relationship with Anna in order to save Anna, to protect Anna from herself. And that act of sacrificing is in fact an act of love. Even though Anna herself didn't receive it that way because she didn't understand why it was being done, she didn't know uh, the full reason behind it. So she didn't perceive it as an act of love, but in fact it was. Now I think this is important for us to understand because I, I can think of many parents who find themselves in a similar situation where they have to do something that is an act of love. It's for their children's own good, but the child isn't always able to receive it that way. I and mean, we see this in small ways all the time when parents give rules, for example, that their children don't like, you know, you can't have candy for dinner or something like that. Children don't always see that as being an act of love when in fact it is. But even on a, on a bigger level, we can think of a parent perhaps who has an ill child, um, perhaps one who has to have all kinds of tests and surgeries or something at a very young age where they're not able to comprehend that what their father or mother is doing by bringing them to the doctor who's poking and pricking and stabbing them and operating on them is in fact an act of love because the child only experiences it as pain and they're not able to understand something perhaps like you know a cancer or something as terrible as that could be. And so I think it's important for us to see this in this movie and see that sometimes something can be an act of love even though we don't perceive it that way. The greatest act of love, of course, though, in this movie comes from Anna, when she sacrifices herself in order to save her sister Elsa. And I think this is a great reflection of the greatest act of love, the act of Christ for us on the cross, where he sacrifices himself for the salvation of the world, for the salvation of sinful humanity. Christ himself tells us that there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And that's exactly what we see Anna doing. She lays down her own life for her sister, the greatest act of love. And what's great about it is Disney intentionally 
magnifies this. They, they put a focus on this, and they point to this as the moment of true love in the movie. The moment of true love doesn't come from Prince Charming offering a kiss and riding romantically off into the distance with his princess. No, the moment of true love comes when somebody goes outside of themselves, sacrifices themselves, offers themselves, and does so for another, when they put somebody else ahead of them. And I think it's important for us to highlight this for everybody who sees this movie. I think it's important for children to get this message because that is the Christian message. That is the good news of the gospel. That is what love is. It's about willing the good of the other. It's about putting others in front of ourselves. And I think that this movie Frozen teaches that so well. I want to add one last little uh, Easter egg that I noticed in the movie, and that's the cameo appearance of Joan of Arc. I don't know how many people caught that, but for Catholics, it's a wonderful little cameo, the wonderful little Easter egg that's thrown in there. It comes during the musical number, Do You Want to Build a Snowman? I'm not going to try to sing it for you. I'm not that good. But there's a scene in this where we see Anna talking about how she's grown so bored and she started talking to the pictures on the wall. And then she says, hang in there, Joan. And you see a picture of Joan of Arc. And I say this is a wonderful thing, not just because it's a random Catholic saint that's thrown in here, but it's a very intentional Catholic saint, I'd be willing to bet. Because Joan of Arc, first of all, was accused of sorcery, the same thing that Elsa will be accused of. But she was also a strong female saint, a warrior saint. And so in that respect, I think she makes a great patron saint for someone like Elsa. And we see what it means to be a strong woman in this movie. It's not about finding Prince Charming and riding off into the distance, but it's about becoming who you are, understanding who you are, and understanding what it truly means to love, which is not to find some romantic love, but to find somebody who you are willing to lay your life down for, somebody for whom you are willing the good. That's what true love is. And I think that's the genius of this movie Frozen. And so I recommend it for everybody. Go out and see this movie. It's well worth the admission price.